let's jump jump into it. Um, as the secretary today, I'd like to call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals regular meeting scheduled for Wednesday, February 24th, sorry, uh, 2021. Our first thing to do is roll call and an appointment of alternates. Um, I'll just call out the names. Joanne? Here, she she said she waved. Present, Mark. sorry. No worries. And he's here. Josh? Present. All right. And then we're going to seat Allie Rice as our fourth commissioner, commissioner for this meeting, which gives us a quorum. <clears throat> So um, now that we've had roll call, the next, as we all remember, Katie Martin, who has been a great, great asset to the town in the position of chair of ZBA for quite some time, will sorely be missed. But we need to figure out an election of officers to move forward. Um, I'll jump into the thing and say I am interested in sharing the Board of Appeals. Is there anyone else that would like to express an interest in this, though? Oh, last call. So run off, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can someone make a nomination and we can proceed from there? I would like to make a nomination that we, or make a motion that we nominate Stephen Antonio as the new chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And can I have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. All right. Thank you, Josh, for that second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? And of course, I'll abstain um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, so the next. Uh, Officer, at this point, it's called secretary. We can discuss whether we change that um, name to vice chair in the future, but for today, it's secretary. I'd like to nominate Joanne, who's been with me a long time uh, on the ZBA. Uh, is there anyone else that was interested in this position, though, before we, you know, firm that up? All right, so I would like to make a motion. Uh, I would like I need a second first, but I would like to make the motion that we make Joanne Hogan the um, Secretary of the Zoning Board of Appeals effective immediately. Can I have a second? All second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? And abstain? Abstain. All right. So it overwhelmingly passes. Thank you, Joanne. Congratulations. Thank you all. Appreciate your, uh, it. Your happy to, will arrive happy to do it. Yes. Happy to do it. <laughs> all right. We'll make um, it work. <laughs> yeah. Moving along, our first application is application 21-02 of William A. Campbell, owner applicant for a variance of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations, section 3.5.1 to construct a 10 foot by 12 foot shed within the front yard at the property located at Two Cricket Lane. Billy, you ready? Sure. Can you give us an overview or a presentation of what you're proposing? We've got some stuff, but if you could go over it, please. Yeah, do you have any of the pictures that showed the, um, the 10 by 12 staking area that I had my neighbors yeah. come over and visit me at, just so you can kind of see where on the property and why yeah. it, is kind of uh, why I have to seek a variance uh, for this odd location. So th there's some pictures that I submitted in my package. They're color pictures. Yeah, we got them. Okay, and then I provided my neighborhood on my cul-de-sac <clears throat> a uh, plot view from my plot, my official plot map, where the where the um, ten by twelve shed. It'll be a Cloder Farms dropped shed, <laughs> right off a of skid. So there's no plumbing. It's just to put you know my snowblower in it. So, um, and I talked to all my neighbors. I had them sign a petition. I, I'm a retired Pratt and Winnie engineer. I've got Tom Kizabat. He used to be board on the board with you folks. And uh, at one, you know, one, two, and four Cricket Lane, um, Mike Zajac is a software engineer adjacent to me, Bob Practor across from me. So I want to make sure everybody on my little cul de sac was on board. And since I'm the handyman for the cul de sac, they would dare, dare not challenge me. <laughs> So anyways, I got them on board. That took no effort. 
And then I staked it out. And I had Mike come over, who's my uh, abutting neighbor there. A property, we share a property line. And he said, of course, I don't have any issues. So everybody's good on my street. And then I, Tom was extremely accommodating, Tom Hazel. In the fall, when I was thinking about putting this simple shed on my property, he actually drove out and we walked my property. And thankfully, he's a Yukon, fellow Yukon Husky. So we talked the same lingo for a few minutes. Um, and he said, yeah, he says, but you do have an odd shaped lot here, Bill. You're, you have two front yards, two backyards. So I would recommend to make sure everybody on the board is, is on board with this. You should just submit this variance request. So uh, he was very helpful. And um, so I got the petition. I kind of laid it out. Uh, again, the only thing I didn't think of offering was the height of the Cloder Farm shed, which will be clearly less than 15 feet tall. It'll probably be nine feet. Um, it's going to squeeze between the trees at the end of my driveway there. And the sole purpose is really, as I've gotten older, my daughter, as Stephen knows, uh, has now married a Marine Corps officer. And my wife, as Stephen knows, has passed away. Uh, I'm left here dealing with snow. And I don't really enjoy the benefits of school systems anymore. And uh, I really need a, a shed to house snow removal equipment kind of adjacent to my driveway so that I can go out there. Right now, it's clogging my driveway with, you know, lawnmowers and all that junk. So my hardship is access. I don't know where else to put it um, close to my driveway. You know, it, in, in a perfect world, I could stick it in the woods uh, that meets all the requirements of accommodating two front yards and two backyards, but then it becomes inaccessible. So that's my hardship. I can't, I can't make it work to, to help me be a resident here. <laughs> Okay. Otherwise, if I, you know, if I keep running into this, I'll have to move because I just can't um, live in the snow. And, you know, it's uh, it's a battle. Every Let's not go there first. I know. I know. <laughs> Step out of time. Tom, what is what exactly are we getting? Because it's a 10 foot minimum from the side yard line. Or is that because it's a back? Um, um, he, he's meeting the because of the size of the shed being under 250 square feet. Um, the side yard, the, the setback from the property line can be within that 10 foot range. So we're just looking for the front yard variance. Um, while uh, Laura wrote our review because she reviewed the application, I was the one on the ground visiting him. And he does have a um, slight stone wall in the rear yard that raises beds with the wood line. Um, so it does make um, his access difficult he'd have to be on the far side of the house and walk everything around the house so in visiting the property i could understand his access issue we tried to talk about how we may get it but it'd be right next to the house um so we tried every option that we could um and other than being in the front yard because of the way that cricket lane sweeps i mean he's got to have close to five, 600 feet of frontage along Cricket Lane, the way that it sweeps, it just makes his south side of his house a front yard. And it also makes his eastern side a front yard on Cricket and Climax. So he was kind of hemmed in there. So my recommendation from him, because it was a small structure, that he apply for the variance, talk to his neighbors and see what the commission would allow. Okay, easy enough, but just for my own clarification, what is the setback? It says ten foot minimum on our paperwork. What does that? Oh, mean? he's from what from what I was measuring, he was over ten feet. He was closer to eleven or twelve feet from that. So that we were, um, Laura and I both reviewed that together, and she can comment on that as well. That the um, meeting the minimum setback from that sideline to his neighbor's pro abutting property would meet under that two hundred and fifty right. foot um, minimum requirement for the shed. Right. Okay, so it's just a hi, it's just a height issue and a front yard issue. Yeah, and the height issue is fifteen feet, and if he's be an issue. nine, we might just let's just condition the application that it right. be under fifteen feet. Right. That's all I'd recommend. Right. Laura, I don't mean to step on toes. Not a problem at all. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Bill? I mean, he's kind of uh, hemmed in by his gigantic front yard. Yeah, he almost says um, it's almost definitely, like two, definitely two front yards. Two front I mean, yards and really no, no back, not much of a backyard. Um, 
Obviously, you can't put it over the septic field either. Right. Yeah, yeah. the back is kind of occupied. Looking at the. What, what's in the back there, Mr. Campbell? Just all woods? Very shallow uh, piece of lawn with a deck, and then where my daughter's playscape was, and then an immediate stone wall, and then about five feet of woods, and then I bump into my um, my neighbor's line. So I have a very shallow backyard. Right. I, one big piece of pie, and my ha house is set way back. So all I have is front yard access. And if you walk out my garage, which I consider the side of my house, that's where the access, that's where the shed would be. But again, as you walk around Cricket, now it becomes my front yard. It's just right. an odd... Yep. And if you're, on, if you're on climax, it looks like it's in my backyard because it's, it's on the other side of the house. So right. it's uh, it's just like Tom said, it's an odd lot. So you can't really see it from climax, right? Not yeah. at all. Yeah. No. And the budding neighbor to the south, he's one of the ones that signed off, correct? Yes, that's or I guess it's West. That's Michael Zajac. He's at Four Cricket Lane, and he's a software engineer. And yes, he, he was no problem with it. Great. Is there any other questions from a board member? No. Okay, would someone like to make a motion in the affirmative? And then Billy, just so you understand what happened. So we pass it in the affirmative to move along to where we discuss it amongst ourselves. So this is your last chance to talk. And then we have a second round where we actually either pass it or you know discuss other options if necessary. Sounds good. All right, so with that being said, can I have somebody make a motion in the affirmative? I'll make a motion. Uh, I make a motion that we approve application number 21-02 for William A. Campbell, owner applicant for a variance of the Simsbury Zoning Regulation Section 3.5.1 to construct a 10 foot by 12 foot shed within the front yard at the property located at Two Cricket Lane. Uh, assessor's map C-19, block 511, and lot 002, zone R-40, uh, with the on, contingent upon it being 15 feet or under and placed in the, in the plot that is outlined in the diagrams and the photos, and that it maintains the 10-foot um, boundary cool. to the side setback. Can someone please second? I'll second that. All right, Mark, thank you. Although, uh, no, okay, now we um, discuss it. So, seems pretty straightforward. I see the hardship, it's black and white for me. Um, I don't see any other places he could really put it on the property and have it be functional. I, I think he's asking for the bare minimum. So, um, you know, I don't really have any questions. Does anyone else? No, and I think where he placed it, at least with the, the rope and the stakes um, in the pictures that he's provided, there's trees right like behind or in front of it, too. So like it's not doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue. And his neighbors said that they were fine with it, too. So um, I'm also fine with it. And like you said, Stephen, um, it's very black and white with what the problem is for him. Josh, any input? I, I don't think it gets much more clear cut than this. I, I think it's a clear thing we should approve here. Yeah. All right. Um, so Tom, refresh my memory. One of us makes a motion for approval of the variant. Well, we kind of already done that. Kind of already did. We did it a little out of order, to be honest yeah. with you. So, hey, I'm new at we this. We closed the hearing and then did the motion, but we should have closed the hearing and had discussion and then done the... Oh yeah. I would say if okay. the motion still, still stands, if the motion still stands with the uh, commission members yeah. as stated prior, take a vote. I think the only thing I would add would be the hardship being that the lot's shape does not provide a backyard space, and that the the the, the really very large front yard becomes the side yard, and that's the logical place to put it next to the driveway. Thank you for explaining the hardship. That is important. Yeah. 
Okay, with so that, I would just entertain a vote. Do we need a, another second, or we're good just altering the initial motion? Yeah. Mark, if you'd like to reaffirm your seconding, then we can go into the approval. Yes, I will. I will second this. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. One, two, three, five. All right. And abstain. Mark, did you vote just to be clear? Yes, I yes, I approve. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Great. So it's unanimous. Thank you very much, Bill, for uh, stopping by on your Zoom call. Thank you, ZBA, <laughs> and thank you, Tom Hazel. You were awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate uh, Bill, it. we'll um, <laughs> we'll we'll be in touch. You bet. Thanks. Good luck, guys. All right. Okay. Thanks, Bill. See ya. Okay, so moving right along to application 21-03 of 15 through 39 Simsbury Turnpike Realty LLC owner and Dunkin' Donuts applicant care of Russo and Rizzio LLC for a variance of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations Section 9.9 .9 and 9.3 to permit two 21.6 square foot menu order boards which change screens and allow light to project through the face of the sign at existing fast food drive through restaurant located at 15 through 39 Albany Turnpike Lane. I think it's just Turnpike. Um, yeah, you don't need it. It's just Turnpike. All right. And Christopher, you like Christopher or Chris? Chris is fine. Or Jim. Mr. Russo. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, if I may make a, qu a quick clarification prior to uh, Mr. Russo starting his um, his description, the um, section 9.2 part of the variance has been um, um, been rectified with the town. That was about temporary signage on the property. Okay. They had a banner and a pole sign. Um, in reaching out to the agent for the applicant, Mr. Russo, um, they did um, come into compliance with the town. It was just a concern for the town that um, they did, weren't fully complying with our zoning regulations while having an application in place. So they will be seeking um, three variances under Section 9.3, which uh, Mr. Russo will describe and discuss and I'll clarify um, as well and then we can have our deliberations and discussions and such. Great. So Chris, the floor is all yours. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chris Russo with Russo and Rizzio LLC uh, offices at uh, 10 Sasco Hill Road in Fairfield. Um, here on an application which may seem a bit like deja vu um, because I think it was three, three or four months ago we were here for McDonald's yeah. um, to do the essentially the exact same sign. And um, uh, actually, when we were making that presentation, uh, a representative, uh, the person who actually runs this Dunkin Donuts um, was on the, the, the uh, hearing and heard us present. And then shortly thereafter, gave me a call and said, Dunkin' Donuts has a similar type of sign, and we would like to um, to also switch to that 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 same sign that McDonald's has. So, um, and it's essentially a mirror image in that it's uh, it's right across the street from that McDonald's. Um, so, we are looking to uh, to place a um, little over twenty one square foot menu order board. Uh, to replace the existing menu board. And I apologize because there was an error in what I submitted. I, I asked for two, um, which is what we did in McDonald's. Yeah. But actually, this is just replacing the one that exists currently at Dunkin' Donuts. Um, so if I can share my screen. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Did that come up the uh, the site yeah, plan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, so the McDonald's uh, is literally right across the street uh, that we were here for a few months ago, um, and uh, in in this Dunkin' Donuts, it's the existing Dunkin' Donuts uh, that's located in this portion of the uh, uh, the existing building that's there, and as you can see right here is a sign. Um, it's a, uh, it's a static menu board sign that, that, you know, some of you, you, you may have driven by already. Um, and this is the, the single sign that we are looking to replace. Um, it is similar to McDonald's. Uh, it, it's an electronic sign. 
it does change um, during the day um, as the menu changes, uh, which allows it to be a smaller board. It's actually one of the benefits. It was the same benefit McDon McDonald's. It's the same benefit here in that um, you don't have to have your entire menu um, up on uh uh, you know, up on that static sign, you can, you can condense the sign. It's a smaller sign, uh, and just display what you're offering at the time, um, to customers who are, who are coming through. Um, it, it's, it also has controls, so it doesn't emit light. I mean, we have the benefit here with, with where this is positioned is it's just basically facing the woods, uh, that are behind here. There's really no neighbors, uh, um, uh, besides maybe birds in the trees that it, that it, that it, that, it, that would be impacted by it. So, um, and I can show you the actual sign here. Here's the actual sign. Um, and uh, one of the, 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 the two variances that uh, Tom brought to my attention um, that, uh, that we require um, in addition to what I had applied for is with regard to how one, where the sign begins from the from off the ground your regulations require that uh the sign starts 24 inches um off the ground and this sign uh starts 16 a little over 16 inches um and and the reason why it's lower is uh this it's a sign that's built for somebody to view sitting in a car obviously so um uh it starts lower it stops at six feet, uh, or, or really 52 inches. So, um, uh, it, you know, which is it's positioned lower. So the sign regulation, I think contemplates what would be your more typical sign. It doesn't really, uh, call out differently for a drive through sign. Um, but this, this sign serves a particular purpose. It's not an advertising sign out to, uh, you know, people who are driving along Albany, Albany Turnpike. It's just specifically for, a customer who is coming through our drive through So we think the uniqueness of that is um, warrants a hardship for granting that variance. Uh, the, the other additional variance is the overall height of this, um, this sign structure. Uh, your regulations have a limit of 10 feet. Um, and uh, this, this sign is, is slightly over that. And the reason is, is because um, Duncan not only in, has the sign, but they include a clearance bar with it. They, they put the structures together. Uh, it's not really um, a support structure, which is uh, what's mentioned in your regulations. It's really that instead of having uh, a, a sign and, and a separate clearance bar, they just put them together. Uh, I think if um, we separated out this clearance bar from the sign and the sign ended right here, we'd be in compliance with your regulations. But the way they do their signs, they have them both together. Um, obviously the sign itself stops, it, it, it really stops at uh, six feet, um, but it just continues on for, the, for this clearance bar. Um, and other than that, um, that that's really, it, it's really the, the same, almost same exact application as the McDonald's one. Uh, this sign is even less visible. Um, I can actually, if I show, I can, I can show the sign on the, uh, on Google Maps um, right here. So there's, there's the existing sign. If you can see that, uh, all, all these, kind of side advertisements that they have will come off and the sign is slightly smaller. Um, so it, it, it won't be as big as this. And you can see it's hidden behind the, the existing building there. Um, you know, the drive-through windows right up from there. And then you can see uh, behind it is, uh, you know, it's heavily wooded back there. Um, so we really think it has, you know, absolutely no impact on anybody. Um, and, uh, I appreciate Tom. I spoke with Tom on Monday. He brought up the, um, the, the sign violations. I called my client and, uh, he submitted pictures to me, which I have, and I, I forwarded it over to Tom to show him. It was, uh, they, they had a, one of those, uh, I think they're, they're vinyl, uh, 
advertising signs on one of the light poles. And then they had a banner across, uh, across the fence um, that uh, they, and they, they've removed those. Um, so I appreciate Tom uh, bringing it to our attention. That's really it. I mean, it's, 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 it's the, essentially the same exact application as we did from McDonald's. Um, I think it even has less impact um, than the McDonald's one. It's only one board. It, it's much better screen than the McDonald's one. And, uh, and they're actually not open as late as McDonald's is either. So the sign, the, the sign won't be on for that for, for as long as the McDonald's one. Happy to answer any questions. Um, pretty straightforward, I think, but. What was the third? So we're, one oh, variance yeah. is too low, one is too high. What was the third variance we're looking for? The 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 light that projects through the sign because it's a digital oh, sign. Oh, okay, internally. Lit. Yeah, so from a staff standpoint, upon the inspections, as you saw from the Google um, the Google Earth images that he showed that the banner on the fence has been taken down and the sign on the light poles, that was verified by myself in person today, um, as well as the pictures from Mr. Russo. Um, so, yeah, the height off the ground was lower than our standards, and the canopy just barely was over our standards. Um, and then the light projection through the sign. So that would be uh, variance to section 9.3C for the height, 9.3C for the height off the ground, and then 9.3H for the light projection through the face of the sign. Um, I will note for the applicant that their former sign was non-conforming to our existing regulations at a total of 40 square feet of signage, which we require 32 square feet or less. And they are going down to 21.6 square feet. So they are reducing a non-conformity in the size of the sign. Um, however, those three um, variances are at play here. Um, and unfortunately, due to, like I, as Mr. Russo had stated, the canopy clearance area is part of the support structure. So it does come into play, even though it is slightly over the 10 feet. Um, and we look forward to working with Duncan in the future if this goes through to make sure that they do stay in compliance and any other issues that they may have will be solved. Um, but at this point in time, um, staff sees it as a similar application to uh, the McDonald's. Um, he did point out that to the rear of the building is woods. Um, it is fenced behind the sign and it is the side of what I believe it is either Staples or Liquor Depot down there that um, it would be mainly facing. So it's just the side of a building from that Google Earth um, photo that he had shown. So with that, um, I don't think there's much more that staff needs to um, add to the application other than those comments. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Um, do we have any questions for Chris before we close the hearing? Any clarification? It's a quick, is the sign that's there now is a lit sign? No. Oh, it's not? should not be. It certainly should not be. Okay. I honestly, I've <laughs> never been through the drive through at Dunkin' Donuts, so... I'm like a strange American, but I've never done that. So, um, I and, I, okay. and I don't see any. I don't see any lighting in front of it that would project out onto it. So, no, I, I don't. I, I'm not, not 100 positive, but I, I don't see. I don't see anything okay. there that would light it. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, I remember from when we did the McDonald's case. Um, we were told that you know it the sign would only change like three times a day. Can I just get a confirmation? You know, this thing is not going to be like changing every five seconds and flashing or anything like that. No, just no, it'd be the same. Once or twice be, a day. Yeah, three, uh, you know, maximum of three times a day. To be honest, I think Duncan changes its menu less than McDonald's. Okay. Uh, I think they offer a lot of the same things throughout the day. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't be any more than three times a day. Okay. Any other questions for Chris? Okay, let's close the hearing at this time. Um, Chris, if you didn't hear before, now we will talk amongst ourselves, but unfortunately we have to ask you to please remain muted. You don't have to actually turn on mute. Um, and uh, then we will vote. Um, so I, I do see, you know, 
the hardship here. Uh, and I also see a reduction in the in the unconformity. Right. So that that's big. It's almost I as Tom alluded to. I don't think the existing signage is in compliance. And I think that what they're asking for, I mean, honestly, as far as height, it's 0.0625 inches like nothing. over, which yeah. I'll be honest, Chris, I don't, you can't talk, but I don't know why you didn't just bend the bar down. Um, <laughs> One and, more pound of the hammer and you would have <laughs> And uh, the 16 inches actually enlightening and Tom, maybe something that we would, you know, when we're reviewing the code, right. You know, we don't really address that drive through is very much here to stay and probably, you know, more than ever. I, I do understand though, that 16 inch for a snow shelf is also a realistic amount that they'd probably have to shovel it out at times, but obviously they're gonna, you're not going to make yeah. people look up from a car. Uh, for, uh, um, from a zoning standpoint, regulations, we could always review the fact that a drive through sign is slightly different than a freestanding yeah. sign for a bank or something like that out front to advertise their location. Um, but Mike and I can have a discussion on that yeah. through the uh, zoning commission for sure. Yeah. Just uh, are they but might be something to visit. I understand. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing is the internally lit, which we are reticent to ever grant that. However, this one's literally facing a brick wall in the woods. Right. So if yeah, nobody lives there. It's not near the street. Uh, well, the birds, you know. Yeah, I mean the the lighting to me is is a bigger issue than the size issues because of the precedent it sets. But you know, we did it with McDonald's and we didn't do it with Hoffman when they wanted it. Um, on in a very similar location um, because you could see that one from the road. So right. um, I, some people on the board weren't here for that, but Hoffman put in for a lit sign up on the building in the same area as McDonald's. And um, we didn't allow it because it's um, visible from the road. And just because it's route 44 doesn't mean we shouldn't care about it as much as we do route 10 or any other part of Simsbury. It's very commercial, but we should still, honor the zoning regs. So the fact that it doesn't show from the road does um, sway me to be more okay with this one. I think it is a major factor and I'm glad that you defined that for other people that would review this meeting and think right. it was a free spot. Yeah, you got it. We got to be careful about that. Um, any other discussion about it? Comments? Well, regarding the, the light and the sign, um, I think Chris mentioned this, but Dunkin' Donuts closes earlier than uh, McDonald's, and we granted it for McDonald's, which we've mentioned. They open at the same time. It looks like I've been looking at their hours online. So, and because, like we've all said, it faces uh, a fence in the woods, um, I don't see an issue in this particular case um, for that, even though, like, what Joanne said, um, we do um, understand the seriousness of like light and how, where it's projecting to. Josh, anything? Uh, nothing to add. I think this is just uh, pretty much a rehash of the McDonald's case and all the if anything, even less of an issue with it pointing into the woods. Okay. With that being said, I think I'll make this motion myself because we've got a couple boxes to, right. uh, to check here. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Um, oh, now I lost my thing. Application 21-03 of 15-39 Simsbury Turnpike Realty LLC owner and Dunkin' Donuts applicant care of Russo and Rizzio LLC for a variance of the Simsbury Zoning Regulations Section 9.3 to permit one 21.6 square foot menu order board with chain screen and allow light to project through the face of the sun at existing fast food drive through restaurant located at 15 39 Albany Turnpike. In further uh, clarification, section 9.3 the sign will be allowed to uh, go up to an elevation 
of 10 feet, one inch, just to cover it, uh, which is a deviation of about one inch from our code. In section 9.3, the minimum height from the ground to the bottom of the sign would be 16 inches versus the 24 inches in our code to facilitate a more comfortable viewing from a car when you are driving by or through drive doing the drive through. And last but not least would be section 9.3 H, which would allow this sign to be uh, internally lit. And I'd further like to clarify that it must always be facing either the wall or the woods where there is nobody to see it. Um, the hardship is there's nowhere else on that lot to put this sign and for it to be a functioning drive through and expedite the service of the customers and thereby inhibiting back up onto the roadways, uh, we should allow this. Would someone like to second? Second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstain? It's unanimous. Thanks for coming in, Chris. We appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Have you a good too. night. Thank you. Okay, which brings us to the approval of the minutes for January 27th, 2021. Did anyone have the opportunity to review these? Uh, not real closely, but I looked through it. I did okay. the same thing. Nothing stood out. It Nothing definitely stood out. The, the spirit of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, um, I noticed one thing. I don't think I was present from, from my memory and I'm listed as present. Oh, that's big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it also, it also says an election of officers, Chairman Martin proposed, but then it says Katie Martin is absent. So did she, I just want to clarify, did she propose a different time and we just, you talked about it or was she present? Steve, is that when we, is that when we posted you, Steve, as secretary? Yes. Is it, okay. Um, I'll double verify that um, um, appointment, appointment and, okay, and Katie. Okay. I'll, I'll try to see if I can clean that up. Yeah. Right, so I didn't notice that. Thank you for seeing though, because we're we're not supposed to approve something that you know is not. You can approve it as amended if you want to make those amendments, or I can hold it until the next meeting. No, no, no. If we can expedite, I'm not into red tape. No, yeah, it's just the spirit of the meeting anyway. So okay, I'd like to approve. Uh, make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of January 27, 2021. With the corrections that Katie Martin be uh, designated as present and Allie Rice being designated as uh, absent. With those, with those corrections, I motion that we approve it. Who would like to second? I'll second. All right, Josh, thank you for that. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? And abstain. Me. Ali is abstaining. Everyone else is approving. So thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry I'm a little bumpy in the chair roll. I will figure it out a little better. No, that was and good. Joanne, thank you for stepping up to be sure. the vice chair. Uh, Tom, we had discussed um, prior to the meeting the titles that maybe we could switch the title that is being used at this present time is secretary that we could switch that to vice chair what would be the path we would follow to do something like that i'll double verify that but it sounds from um laura's uh, input that it would be a bylaw change that we can vote upon but i'll double check um the um the route that that has to go if it's that simple then we could just um swap that out um, in the meantime, we can call ourselves whatever we want in the meeting, and um, all I'll need is a signature, and we'll say secretary underneath it until right. that does get changed. Yep. But um, in the meantime, as long as we know that there is a chair and that there is someone who's in charge of signing off, um, for all technical purposes, it'll be a title line until um, I verify how that um, can be changed. 
Okay. And the only other open business is there's a position open now, and I know Ram had expressed interest, but that same opportunity would be open to Ali, or is it the political? Um, I've play a role? I've been educated. I've been educated lately because this is a different form of government that I'm familiar with, coming from Windsor, where um, there were appointments. I believe that this uh, board is political. In it, that yeah. you were elected. We're elected, yeah. So um, that would have um, as soon, as, yeah, as soon as Katie puts in her resignation, whatever her party affiliation, they'll have a time period of time to appoint someone to that position. May it be an alternate or someone from the outside? If there's a non-party person as an alternate, say she's a Democrat and all the alternates are Republican, they would have a time period to appoint a Democrat. Otherwise, they may move one of the alternates up and not. Um, push for a replacement, allow it to be open to anybody. Um, so as soon as Katie gets into that process, it's between her and her party and the town clerk. So I would have to say it's a waiting game on that one. And I believe by discussion with Mike that the time period is somewhere around 30 days. And that's just off the top of our heads. Okay. So, for clarification, she is a Democrat. Just I, I know, yeah. so I might as well okay. acknowledge it. I, I, so, I don't pay attention to any of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know who you are. i got to be honest, I'm not sure what Ram is either. Uh, it's a relative- Ram and I are both Democrats, so it will probably be addressed at our DTC meeting it will um, be- with our nominations chair. I don't know. But if the, exactly yep. the chair is Elaine Lang, and if you don't have her contact information, I, I'd be more than happy to share it. Um. But she, you would want to reach out to her if you are interested in the permanent seat, um, just to discuss it with her and let her know of your interest because yeah. the, they're looking for the easiest path. And if you're in, or Rams in, you know, whoever, yeah. but you, you want to reach out to Elaine that way for her to reach out to you. So Absolutely. that's just a suggestion, yeah. not a rule. Um, just usually the way it goes. All right. Is there anything else anyone else would like to discuss at this meeting? Mm-hmm. All right. Would someone like to make that favorite motion of the night? <laughs> All right. I'll make a motion that we close the meeting of February 24th, 2021. And a second? All second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Thank you all for being here. Thanks, Stephen. Good night.